says, do you want to copy the existing state file to the new backend, which is S3? Hello and welcome back. In this video, I am going to show you how you can use S3 bucket and DynamoDB table to store your Terraform state file from your local machine to S3 backend. So storing your Terraform state file on backends like S3 is a good practice so that you can work with your teams. You can have features like state locking, versioning, encryption and a lot of other features. So you can use options like S3, Azure Blob Storage, Google Cloud Storage, HashiCorp Console, Terraform Cloud and a lot of these options to store your Terraform state. But we are going to use S3 bucket to store our Terraform state file. I am going to show you everything step by step. Uh, so please watch this video till the end if you want to know how, how we can store our Terraform state file on S3. So before we start with the video, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. I post videos on AWS, Terraform, DevOps, Cloud and everything that you might be interested in. So please subscribe to my channel, like this video and let's start. So for us to store our state file, first thing we need to do is to create S3 bucket and DynamoDB table. So I'm going to create a new file, name it as backend.tf. So let me just show you that uh, this is my state file and we are going to migrate all of this in our S3 uh, and let's go and see let's go to our my bucket so I am here in my S3 dashboard I only have one of the bucket that I'm using right now but we are going to create a new bucket and we will be using that to store our state file so I'm going to go to my terraform document I'm going to go to my VS code in the backend.tf first thing we need to do is to create S3 and the next thing we need to do is to create DynamoDB. So we are using S3 bucket to store the state file here, but we are using DynamoDB to enable state locking. What do I mean by state locking? So there can be a chance where multiple people are working on the same code and they might be pushing or making the change in the state file simultaneously. So to avoid corruption of the state file, we can enable DynamoDB table for state locking so that when someone applies or someone makes changes to the state file, it should be locked for everyone else. So if I'm applying or making the change to a state file, it will not be, you cannot make the change to state file at the same time. So DynamoDB table is used for state locking to avoid corruption of the state file. I hope that is clear and let's create a resource which is going to be AWS underscore S3 underscore bucket so underscore bucket if you're not sure how to create an s3 bucket you can check out my videos or you can always use the terraform official documentation uh, to see how you can create an s3 bucket so we're going to create a bucket let's name this my bucket this is the name used by terraform next thing i'm going to add an argument which is I'm going to add an argument saying name name this name should be globally unique because this is the name that you're going that you're going to give to an s3 bucket so the name is going to be s3 uh, state backend some random numbers to make it globally unique make sure this is globally unique haven't taken by anyone else in the world so next once i added name i'm going to add another argument uh, to enable versioning Versioning is used to have different versions of your objects inside the S3 bucket. So we are going to enable versioning so that we can have different uh, versions of our state file. We can always go back and revert to any version if you want. So that's a good thing. So reversioning enabled equals to equals to true. This will enable versioning in our S3 bucket, which is great. Next, I'm also going to add encryption so that our state file is encrypted. So to add encryption, you have two different types of encryption, server side and client side. You can always use Terraform official documentation to see how you can do that. So we're going to use this argument, which is server side encryption configuration. So I'm going to use that and put it in my code, server side encryption, my encryption configuration. And I'm going to add few rules. So let's put this here and see what arguments do we need. So we are going to use the rule apply by default. I'm not going to use the KMS because I don't want to create any other resource. We are going to use the algorithm. You can use KMS if you want, but for this demo, I'm not using KMS. So in here, I'm going to add a rule. Apply underscore server underscore side. So you can use it from here as well. So no need to type that much. 
So we are going to use the server side encryption and I am going to copy this from here. So copy it from here and I'm going to make the change in this. So I'm going to make the change in this. Okay. All right. So I don't have any KMS key, so I'm going to remove that. And I don't want to use KMS, I want to use SES algorithm, which is going to be AES256. So AES256. So this is going to create a bucket and enable versioning. Also have encryption enabled as well. So I'm going to save this, run Terraform validate to see if all the syntax is correct or not. And I'm getting an error saying that the name is not expected here. Sorry, this argument is not named but bucket. I am sorry. So bucket is this. And if I run Terraform validate now, I'm going to get the okay. Which is, uh, next thing I need, I'm going to do is to create a DynamoDB table. So to create a DynamoDB table, I am going to create define a resource. The resource is going to be AWS underscore DynamoDB underscore table. If you're not sure how to create that, you can always use the official documentation. I'm going to paste the link in the description below. So you can see the resource to create AWS DynamoDB table is this AWS underscore DynamoDB underscore table. So we are going to create a DynamoDB table for state locking. So I'm going to give this as state lock. And inside this, we are going to pass some parameters. The first parameter that we're going to pass is going to be the name. So name of the DynamoDB table is going to be state state hyphen lock. Okay. Next thing I'm going to pass is the billing mode. So billing underscore mode is going to be pay per request. You have two different types of billing mode. One is provisioned, one is pay per request. I'm going to use pay per request here. You can use any of them. Then I'm going to use hash key. So hash underscore key you have two different cache keys lock id and user id so we're going to use lock id here so lock id all right next thing we need to add is the attribute section so attribute and here i'm going to add name name is going to be the lock per lock id so lock sorry lock id and the type here is going to be Yes. So I'm not going in depth, in depth of what all of these things are, uh, but I hope you understood. So these two resources we need to create first before we enable our backend or before we make the change to store our Terraform state in the S3. So these two resources are required. You can either create it manually if you want to, or you can create it in Terraform, which is recommended. So always create in Terraform. So now that it is ready, let's run Terraform plan to see what is going to happen. So I'm going to run Terraform plan and it should tell us that this s3 bucket and dynamo deep table is going to be created let's see it's refreshing and we get uh, we get the plan as two is going to be added let's see what these two resources are so one is s3 bucket which is which is this and the second is dynamo db table so i'm going to terraform apply this and let's see uh, this in the console so terraform apply hyphen auto hyphen approve Anything. So you can see it's in creating state right now and the bucket is ready. So let's see. So now it is created. If I refresh, I should see that the bucket state lock is active, which is okay. So we have the DynamoDB table and I believe we also have the S3 bucket as well. So S3, we also have the S3 bucket, which is here. So now we are okay and we can now make the configurations in the Terraform a block present here in Terraform in the provider.tf. So this is the Terraform block where you have to make the change. You have to define a block named as backend. Uh, so I'm going, to, I'm going to make the configurations here. Backend, we are going to use the backend as S3. So I have entered that here. So S3 bucket, which we have entered here. Next is DynamoDB table. We need to add the details about DynamoDB table. So DynamoDB underscore table equals to the name of the table, which is uh, which is state hyphen lock. So I can use this. I'm going to copy it and paste it inside my DynamoDB table. Once we do that bucket DynamoDB table key, key is going to be the path 
where you want to store your state file so inside s3 what part do you want to store so i'm going to put global uh, slash my state my state file slash terraform dot tf state so by key I mean I want to store my state file terraform state file in this path inside global inside my state file inside terraform.tf state so we have bucket we have dynamo db table we have key I'm going to add a region we need to add a region as well so region is going to be us dash east dash one you can use your own region uh, region then we need to also have encrypt so encrypt equals to true and we can save this now we are ready to store our state terraform state from a local machine to the s3 bucket that we created here so right now i have added the backend first i'm going to run terraform validate to see everything is correct or not so terraform validate to see that syntax is correct uh, and i got everything is correct clear here and terraform in it to now store this on s3 so if i show you in this in this state bucket s3 state bucket backend i don't have anything right now so i'm going to run terraform uh, plan first to see what is going to happen so terraform plan says that there's a change in the backend uh, configuration if you want to you have requested to use the s3 as a backend so if you want to do that run terraform init command so i'm going to run terraform init so terraform init initializing the backend and it will ask you a message if you want to store all your state file from your local to s3 so let's see acquiring the state log this may take minutes so it says do you want to copy the existing state file to the new backend which is s3 so if you want to do that you're going to type yes and i am going to type yes so everything that is stored here is going to be copied from here to s3 bucket so i'm going to type yes and let's see what happens so now it is doing the process it says successfully configured backend as s3 Terraform will automatically use this package if you uh, so this has this has done the thing uh, we can see if I refresh here now I can see that if there's a path global my state file and the terraform.tf state which is what we have described in our provider.tf in the key path if you have the same configuration as me please like this video and let's continue so if you see here the terraform tf state is completely empty which means everything is migrated from here to S3 bucket. And if I open this file and I click on open here, you should see that everything is present here, which means we have successfully initiated our backend as S3. Uh, let's try this out. Let's make a change. I'm going to make a change here in my, so I have, a, I have, I have a uh, AWS instance created. I'm going to make a change that this is my new terraform instance hello s3 backend something like this so if i apply a terra first let's do terraform plan it should show me that i we are doing a modification in s3 uh, in aws instance it should show that one is to be modified or one is to be changed let's see so it is acquiring state lock it is refreshing everything from the s3 bucket backend it is not using our local backend which is amazing so we have successfully initiated our s3 backend uh, so it's refreshing everything and it's going to show us that one thing is going to be modified so you can see one thing is going to be changed if i run terraform apply hyphen auto hyphen approve it's going to do the same thing and we can see the change here in our state file as well so this state file has a lot of features it has bucket versioning enabled as well it has encryption enabled as well so you can do that only when you use remote backends like S3. You cannot do it in your local backend. That is why recommended to use backends like S3 and Azure Blob Storage and Cloud Pool Cloud, etc. So you can see the modification has been completed. And if I go here and just run uh, S3 backend, once I refresh this, obviously after I refresh and I search for S3 backend, I can see. This is a change made and it is recorded in the state file present in my S3 bucket. So this is how you do it. If you want to go back to your local file, you just need to go here in the provider.tf, either delete this or comment this out. So I'm going to comment this out. If I run Terraform plan, it's going to show me that you have chose to use a different uh, backend, not using S3. So I'm going to run Terraform in it. And if it is going to ask me if I want to migrate the state, I'm going to, I want to run Terraform init hyphen migrate hyphen state. So I'm going to run that 
and this will this will push all the state file all the state configurations or all everything that in the what's there uh, to back in our in my local machine this is how you create s3 bucket dynamo db table to store your terraform state file from your local machine to the state machine uh, to the remote machine so now you can see everything is there in my local machine this is how you do it if you if you understood the video please like this video subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video thank you have a good day